Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts and today I'm back with part three of my buyer SFR1 instructional videos. Uh, part one, we hooked up the basic system and had engine sounds and steering. Part two, we hooked up additional sounds. We showed how to download sounds off the internet or your phone and make those work and have switches to operate the sounds on and off. Today it's all about lighting. We're going to hook up uh, brake lights, turn signals, tail lights, headlights. We're going to show how to turn lights on and off with the transmitter and even how to make lights flash and turn them on and off with the transmitter. So today it's lighting basics. These first three parts should give you a really good overview of this system. In a couple weeks I'm going to come back with some more videos on S-Bus and advanced features like shifting sounds, um, additional lighting features and some other powerful things that this uh, unit does. So anyway, let's go into the lighting. Let's get started. So here we go on part three, lighting effects. So in the first part, we hooked up the motor and the steering and got some sounds going. In the second part, we showed how to do special sounds like the horn and uh, the CB chatter, uh, music, um, other sound effects. In this part, I'm going to show the basics of lighting. Now remember in the package it came with this little harness. It's a 10 core harness and it just plugs in right here. And that gives you eight lighting outputs. The black and the white are just positive. So this is negative switched. In other words, um, the negatives hook to the, the colored leads and the positives all to go together on either the black or the white. Now you can also buy a second cable and plug it in here and get eight more outputs for a total of 16. Now that's a lot. You normally would not need that on, on a, a truck, maybe a specialty truck, um, because eight gives you, you know, like turn signals, brake lights, tail lights, headlights, fog lights, and a couple emergency lights, but you can add more up to 60. Now also this this is designed so you can just solder your your lights to it and uh, put them in your truck and this is what I use in my trucks but they also make the AKL8 and the AKL8W and what those are they're optional and I'm actually going to use this AKL8 as I set this up today and the reason for that is it plugs in the same way, but now it has a terminal strip for the leads. And you just push down on the little button, stick the wire in, and boom, you're ready to go. No soldering required. So for setting up here on the bench and prototyping, this is going to be very easy for me to show you how everything works. I don't normally use these in my trucks because for room and plus I, I don't like connections I like soldered things but they will work fine in the truck they also make the AKL8W and the difference with that one is it has this out here and show you it has spaces for resistors okay the outputs here are straight through from the battery. So if you're using a uh, three cell LiPo, one point or 11.4 volts, whatever it is, that outputs directly. So you need to have a resistor in line with the LED. Now these LEDs that come in the starter package have a resistor already in line. Uh, I sell um, the LEDs on hobbyconcepts.net with resistors all built in in various sizes and colors so you don't need this but uh, if you're going to use just plain LEDs from other source you're going to need to put resistors somewhere and this makes it easy so that's the difference in those two and the reason for that is with the resistor here close to the bulb sometimes it's nice to just have wires on there for for fit reasons although I've pretty much used these on every location in every truck and not had a problem. So okay, so we're going to plug this baby in and we're going to hook up some lights. 
So I've hooked up two um, LED lights to this output. I hooked up the white one to number one, and I hooked up this uh, amber one to number uh, five. And I had turned this off, so I'll turn it on. Now, you can see that this is lit up right from the start. I didn't have to do anything else. I made no changes in programming. And uh, notice that the turn signals, this one's hooked to a turn signal, doesn't work. So let me go back to the computer and I'll show you how we set this up. Now again, I haven't hooked up anything since we uh, left the last video. No more patch cables, no anything. So if I go to configuration, there's an outputs tab right here, and then outputs. And that brings up a list of my 16 outputs. So in this, this is pre-filled in from the uh, uh, program we originally ran. So daytime running lights are in number one, and in uh, number five is left turn signal. Okay, so the, the reason that light came on uh, when I turned the unit on is daytime running lights are always on. And the turn signal didn't work, so let's take a look at how to make that work. So we're going to go over here. We've got output options. And we scroll down here. It says automatic indicator lights while turning. And American indicator mode. We'll transfer the project data. And I will uh, reset up the camera and we'll see how that affected things. All right, so we're back here to our unit. We made that one change. And now what we've got is turn signals. Now I only hooked up one, but that's all there is to it. You don't have to do any other fancy programming. You don't have to add any patch cables. Now another thing cool about the daytime running lights is when I start the engine sounds, you can watch this light actually flicker. And that flickering, obviously, is representing our, our alternator coming up to speed. Uh, really looks great with the sounds um, uh, when the engine's starting and the lights are flickering. Now, uh, this doesn't have any sound with it because the engine sound's not on. But if I turn the engine on... then we get turn signal sounds. So that is the very basics of hooking up lights. So you can see here our outputs tab. And again, we hooked up number one, daytime running lights, and we hooked up number five, left turn signal. Output seven and eight here are bending lights, and we're, we're not gonna use bending lights. I think bending lights they use in Europe for illuminating corners. So I'm gonna change this bending light to a brake light. So number seven is now a brake light. So we're going to hook up a bulb to that and uh, see how that works. We'll transfer the project data here. Okay, so I'll go back, hook up a bulb, and we'll take a look at that. What I've done here is I've added a few extra lights. Okay, so I added one more turn signal, and it's in spot six. I added a brake light, and remember we assigned that to spot 7, and I added a headlight, and it's a larger size LED. So I still haven't plugged in any patch cables or done any of that. This is all still the original programming. So let's see what happens. So we have uh, turn signals. Now you'll notice that the daytime running lights dim when the turn signals go on. Our brake light is on all the time, but when we go forward, 
the brake light goes off. When we go to neutral, the brake light stays on. Now these are all adjustable later, but that's just the standard setup. When we go in reverse, the brake light goes off and the hazard lights go on. Back to forward, brake light. So that's just the basic setup on the lights and really all that is is just plugging them in. There was no real big programming required. But now let's talk about the headlights. And Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my extra patch cable and we'll do this from channel 4 to prop 4. Alright, get that plugged in. Channel 4 to prop 4. So that's going to give this control uh, access to the lights. Okay, and so I'm going to go back to the computer and we'll see what kind of programming we got there. Oh, notice that this this does something right now. So we'll go back and I'll show you how that works. Back to the computer, we went to the Prop 4 tab. Now remember, Prop tab is now this stick right here. And we plugged it in. But here's what happened. Some of these were filled in with the original program that we did. And that's why it was turning on some lights. So we're going to take all of those and we're going to click Not Used. Every single one of them, because we're going to fill in our own. And that's pretty straightforward. So we'll just erase all of them. And we're going to fill in our own stuff. All right, now some of those, you notice one of them said volume up and down and one of them said engine start off and on. Well, we already did those on different switches. So the first one I'm gonna do is headlights. So we go over here and we go, we can look at the outputs. Now, uh, low beam headlight, okay. Transfer project data. And we'll see what we've got once that's uh, transferred. So we transferred our, our data, and now, there we go. Headlights on, headlights off. It's that simple. Now, just like the sound, we can do another function if we hold it for three seconds. We can do a function this way, another function if we hold it for three seconds and functions in between and we can do any of the outputs we want. So we'll go back and I'm going to go through some of the setup of the lights. We're going to go back to the computer. Back here on the computer I'm at my output tab. Now I want to show you how easy it is to adjust these. So if we go here to output options alright this is the options and you basically just check on or off. So light flickering when starting, and we saw what that did with the uh, with the uh, daytime running lights. I have it set on medium, light bulb effect on light. If you want to have it more, you can just set it on heavy, set it back to medium. Okay, brake light always on at stationary. I like that. One of the things I don't like about the Tamiya MFC is when it's in neutral, the brake lights aren't on. You actually have to bump the throttle into reverse a little bit to turn on the brake lights. This one you can have it so the brake lights stay on when the truck's not moving and as soon as you start moving they come off and that's the way it's set now and brake light remain on for five seconds. If you unclick this then this becomes more important because when you stop then they go off after five seconds and the brake lights go off when you're backing up which again with the Tamiya unit the brake lights stay on when you're backing up. Okay, threshold for brake light. You can uh, you can adjust that. Um, hazard lights automatically on when reversing. Well, you saw what that looked like. When I put it in reverse, the hazard lights come on. 
If I don't want them to come on, I just uncheck it. I kind of like that though. So we're going to leave that on. Hazard light switch off, switch off indicator lights after a certain number of flashes. You can put that to 2 or 20. Automatic indicator lights while turning. Well, we did turn that on earlier. In American style indicator mode, we turned that on. Steering threshold indicator on. Now, this is really cool. So, when you move the stick on a Tamiya MFC, the steering has to be all the way over for the flashers to come on. Well, here, we turn the flashers on at only 40% of the stick travel, and we turn them off at 10%. So, when you start to turn, they come on, and then they don't really go off until you go back to the center. Now, you can adjust that, but... I love the way that works. The flashing frequency, you can adjust how fast or slow they, they flash. Bending lights also work when the light is off. Bending lights, uh, whoop, touch screen computer here, we don't want to switch that. Bending light via indicators. Uh, bending lights, again, are more of a European thing, but you can have ba basically lights to illuminate the road when you turn. Use bending light as a fog light. Daytime running light via a switch. So if you check this, you can turn those on and off with a switch. Daytime running light is only switched on when engine sound is on. I have that off, which means as soon as I turn the unit on, the daytime running lights are on. Reversing light only when driving. Low beam with Xenon HID turn on effect. That's pretty cool because the lights are low and then when you start the truck up, they go bright. Low beam with xenon. Uh, parking light, low and high beam headlight always on when engine sound is on. So you can have that automatically turn on uh, uh, or off the lights. Now some of these things, uh, they have a ship setting here. Smoke generator settings. Oh boy. <laughs> We're going to have fun with this. Now, we can also, when we go back to the outputs, we can adjust them here. So right now, we output two is parking lights. But let's say I want to have something else. So I'll click the down arrow. And instead of parking lights, I'm going to go with a flashing light. Now, as soon as I did that, it popped up another option here. And that is the number of pulses. Let's leave it at five. Turn my unit back. Oh, I need I need batteries. Okay, I'm gonna pause this. I'll come back in a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay, so we changed output two to flashing light. So now we're gonna go back over here to our proportional channels. We're still on prop four. Remember, we had the low beam headlights turn on with that. So we're gonna put this flashing light the other direction. And that's output 2. Output 2. Okay. Transfer project data. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to our unit here. I'll be right back. Back to our unit. So you can see that I added a blue light to output number 2. So our headlights stay the same. They go on and off with this direction. And now this flashing light goes on with the other switch. And you can change the flash rate, as I showed you, to be slower or faster. And you can add sound to it. Um, you could have a siren sound or a blinking sound or no sound. Um, it's all completely adjustable. You can also add, for example, if you wanted to add a bunch of uh, underbody glow lights, you would just hook those up to an empty spot and uh, have the ability to turn those on and off. So that's how you set up the lights on the, uh, on the system. It's pretty straightforward, uh, nothing real complicated. You can see I soldered these together. These are all the positives and ran one wire in just because it was getting too full. But really pretty straightforward and pretty easy to run all the, all the light wiring. 
So we're here we have now the complete setup. We've got light, sound, uh, we can turn the motor on and off. Great startup sound. We've got our headlights on and off. We've got our flashing light on and off. Uh, our brake lights work. They go off when you go forward and they go off when you go in reverse. Very cool. Uh, we have the flashers set to be on in reverse and off and forward. We have our turn signals. That basically gives you the, the ordinary setup of an SFR1. As you can see, it's very powerful. You can change a lot of things. There's a lot more features. And I'm going to show those in additional videos in the future, basically for advanced users. We'll talk about SBUS and how to hook that up. We're going to hook it to an 18-channel radio, and we're going to show you some amazing things. But that's going to be a couple weeks. I have a couple trucks to build in the meantime. So I will uh, have these videos up, and currently, um, after I posted the first vi video, these things sold out like crazy. So more are coming. Um, they should be in stock in a couple of weeks. And uh, just keep an eye on uh, hobbyconcepts.net to see that. Uh, ask me questions in the, in the comments on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. I, I love doing these instructional videos. I know this isn't going to be like my most watched video, but if you have one of these systems, you really will, will like to have this available. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time.